everybody. What we have been doing all day today is cutting these things out. These little guys here. And what these are for is this is where the cross brace is here. And this is to kind of beef up the top because there's not much here. There's a there's like a one by uh, two uh, here. And we've added stuff here that to distribute the load as this thing tries to twist we're, we don't want it to just twist right here we want to have all of this all the way from here to here trying to twist trying to twist that which is a lot more boat to twist than just this kind of center core here which you could crack and twist and break but once you add this and we also have a wood that goes vertically here under here to take the load all the way from top down to the floor and the floor we've got uh, well this is not a good example to do the floor on this is a better one here where we cross braced all this stuff up but in the floor we got all one by uh, two by fours and vertical two by fours and uh, so and we're gonna have the same thing here on this we've got all of these ones made those two for front those two for rear those two for the rear and these two for the front and now we're we got one for the rear made there and we got to make two more here and well three more one for that side and two for this side so that is what we're working on today problem is rain <laughs> it's coming it keeps kind of kind of we lost half a day this morning because of rain and now we're uh, trying to well, you can't make up for it. You just have to just keep working. But this is basically, basically what we do. We take this model here, the original one that we drew, and so that they all match. We, you can see the outline here from this pencil marker going around here and down, and then we cut it out of here. And then to make good use of the wood, we can flip this around. You can actually get two of these pretty much out of a piece of wood like this see right here I have to move it down slightly like that and so uh, that's how we make good use of our wood we just flip it and kind of bring it in as close as we can and cut the next one and then flip it and do this one and flip it and do that one back and forth like that kind of seesawing uh, back and forth but the interesting thing once this is done once we've cut this we have a I want to put like a tribal wave tribal waves on the side of the boat and the pattern that we have left after we cut these looks like a tribal wave and so I've got to save this piece here for the artist that is going to uh, uh, do uh, the artwork on the side but doesn't that look like a tribal wave so if they paint some graphic on the side similar to that I'm not saying that's it but yeah you know just that's a, interesting that after cutting and this is supposed to be shaped like a wave going up and then back down and the back down is supposed to blend in with this angle here this ang angle here can, continues up and then more like a wave so it's kind of like a wave thing plus when you set here you've got something to kind of hold on to and we'll have plywood up to on this top part up to about here so you can set here facing backwards and you, again you got something to hold on to when you set here and there too and there and there and there of course everywhere so anyway uh we will uh i gotta get going and get cutting uh i gotta put on this is a bunch of our scrap wood that we have in here and pieces the, all these pieces are actually good ones that we uh for the cross beams support back there but it's not assembled right now like i said these are like every one of these is like a puzzle so, uh, all the pieces interlock and it actually becomes like a solid block of wood you, you know a huge block of wood that hopefully is indestructible <laughs> for waves and storms and anything else that comes at, at, at us and again that's the purpose of this is kind of distribute the load all the way out to here this is also a uh, kiln dried lawan lawan i put the a in the wrong place so this is the strongest and red this is red lawan you can see this is red and this is white this is white uh, uh lawan and this is red white is softer 
and not as um, strong. It's strong, but not as strong as the red. The red's harder, it's heavier, and it's stronger. And this is also kiln dried on top of that. I had to pay a premium. I had to pay another like 70 pesos per piece, uh, two by four by ten, for the kiln drying. And that's all they had in stock, so that's what I was kind of stuck with. But I'm happy that I got it because that's what I'm using. I need a stronger piece on top there. So we are good to go. We're still drying our mahogany over here. And it's getting better. As you see, it's kind of getting a more yellowish, reddish color. And in the camera, it doesn't look like that. But in real life, the colors uh, do look more yellowish, reddish, which is a mahogany typical color and that's the sap coming out of the core as it dries the sap kind of bleeds out and the, replaces the water that's in there and then you get that brownish reddish mahogany color that I like I actually like that that's a nice color almost like the red uh, uh, Luan. some people call this Philippine mahogany that's a trade name for the red Luan. It's Philippine mahogany, but it's not a true mahogany. That is a true mahogany there. So, anyway, we got to go over there and get cutting. And then we got to put the tarpaulins on. Those are our tarpaulins that we cover these guys with and get scrambling because I think the rain's about to come. I thought the wind's coming from this way, but if you look over here, there's real high clouds. They're really dark coming from this way. So the, the upper wind is going that way, and the lower wind that we're getting is going that way. So anyway, we got to hurry. We got to cut this one. Or maybe we want... That's about four. If I can focus on my watch there. Four o'clock. It's not focusing, but I think you can see four o'clock there. Uh, and we usually wrap up at five because it starts getting dark. By the time we get everything tarpaulin and, and stuff, it's getting dark enough that we can't see that well. So we got to get cracking. Cut two more of these and we'll be done because we got the model plus two more. And that's exactly what we need. We need one more there at the center mothership, I'm calling her. And the two front ones for the mothership. So we will be back with more. From my paradise on the Italian island, cutting these little uh, supports <laughs> all day. And with this, the other thing I want to tell you too is that this saw, if you get a jigsaw, and this is upside down, of course. Let me turn, get right side up. If you get one of these, get the one that's got the variable pitch here. This here, is the variable throw on the blade. That's one, two, three, four. Four, number four will cut through two by fours easily uh, but I'm using number two because when you're cutting a hardwood like this and this is not super hardwood but the blade or the bottom of the blade because it's flexible tries to follow the grain so as you're going curving into the grain that bottom of the blade tries to go with the grain so your cut won't be straight up and down it'll kind of start curving and then the top will be narrow and the bottom cut will be wide so uh, what helps that is to not cut on four which cuts ply I mean cuts a uh, two by four is fast but cut on one or two which cuts very slow but it doesn't throw the blade out like this so, so much it's more of a straight up and down and then you minimize that that curling of, of, of the blade trying to follow the grain so hopefully you understood that, but always get a jigsaw with that adjustment. Because if you don't, you're cutting slow everything, just turtle slow. So we will cut a couple of these, a couple more of these guys, and we will be back with more from my paradise on Italian Island. Hopefully we don't get rained on. Bye for now. Hey everybody. We are here today. I'm going to walk around that bamboo pole and I'll show you what we did. We actually finished cutting Mr. Rooster's coin, the gold guy over there that they use his feathers for fishing lures. But anyway, we finished these things. These little, uh, this thing here. So we finished making all these. So we got this one, this one that one that one 
those two at the back of that one the two up here but we've been working other things on this one here i don't know where oh they're down here down here see right right here so this guy goes here but the other thing we did today was we um added this insert see because there's one thickness of one by two here but we wanted to double up and strengthen it we put another one here at the front crossing this one over here uh and also as you can see right here there is that notch you see right here there's this notch thing here so we want to put a one by two here because we got it here so we're going to put it here so we notch this piece of wood to fit on there and it interlocks and then goes and follows the curve of this brace all the way down to there and so it matches and then we made this inside one here too see this one here and it matches this curve here once it uh, comes inside there and there's another one on that side it fell down it was up up here but basically these we did the back the same way we got all those uh, cuts and stuff made but actually it's been a pretty eventful day as far as getting stuff done and kind of finishing some things so we got these low distribution things going here and there and there this doesn't go here that's a shim we we uh, added wood here and under here we're gonna have to bow this down because uh but this is the soft loa on that you can bend so we'll put a a, a vice on this in fact like a clamp a c-clamp like that on there this piece here I don't know where this piece goes no, that's, not, that's not used so anyway we've got these ones done all this here boxed in double one by twos another one by two going across the back we got these cross braces in here cross brace here and oh that's what that was the other cross brace cross brace that goes in here this cross brace fits in here and it's notched to fit on there you see the notch there you see that oh, that's dark that notch fits on that bump there so like that locks in to place and then of course it fits here against that so we got the back cross brace we got his you see the cross bracing here up and down up and down and even in the very front there on both sides uh, this is the mother ship here and then we've got additional one by twos here um just basically line the whole inside with one by twos to double the thickness of that and uh now we're going to start on that uh hole over there to uh cross bracing it like all this this stuff we'll also have to put these these uh well actually we'll start with this we'll put the one by twos all the way around the inside uh, the, and then we'll start cross bracing uh against those so they'll go under that lip there. Do you see that top, the very top of the boat there? There'll be a one by two in between here, this rib and 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 that, and all the way around both sides. And then, after all that's in, then we'll, there'll be a one piece continuous one on, on top of that, running all the full length as far as it can up to that front uh, cross beam brace and on both sides and in the front too. So we'll double up basically like this where we've got uh, this one by two and this one by, or this one by two, yeah, right there, doubling up on those all the way around those holes there. So that's our next uh, step so that we've got So this is all the do. cross bracing here. You can see it's kind of like a, almost like a solid block uh, here for, and then the load distribution again out to here that one down there the whole bottom here is uh, two by fours for the floor uh, so that if this beam and because this guy is going to be trying to twist this one the mothership because he's going to be reacting to his wave and this guy's going to be reacting to his wave and the mothership's going to be reacting to her wave so these things can be trying to go in who knows how many directions minimum three 
uh, at one time. So that's the reason we have all of this extra strengthening uh, going on. All right, everybody. <laughs> I'm going to show you what we've been spending all this time doing. So anyway, I'm just going to run through. I'm not going to tell you the order that we did things, but I'm going to run through what we did. One of the things we did was put this uh, one by two under this top lip here all the way from the front all the way to here and over to here too there's one on the both cross sides beams, of course there will be two of those we're going to get quarter inch plate aluminum and put on each side uh, three inches tall and one quarter inch thick all the way uh, across into here and uh, then we did basically the same thing that we did here. We put, actually we put these little one by twos in the top here between these one by ones. And then we put this one by two here on top. Obviously everything's not epoxied or nail. It's all just mocked up. We cross uh, braced all these things across here because this is this is three holes, but it's got to act like one boat. So this one can't be doing this and that and that one not. You, you know, I, I mean, everything has to rise and fall and twist and move as if it's one. It can't be three things going, you know, like this. You, you know, so that's why everything's all uh, kind of reinforced and stiffened. And back here, of course, same thing. You can set here. This piece here actually goes up flush with this, so when it's all epoxied and nailed, it'll be there. And then you can set here, and you can again hold on to these, either facing the front or if you can face the back with your feet on the steps and be fishing off of the back. And of course, we got all our miscellaneous pieces of wood there, but th that's the rear steps there. And the same over here with the uh, mother mother hole or mothership uh, cross braced into here uh, added one by twos on top one by twos under here along the side both sides of course uh, one by two the exact same thing we just reinforce all the top and this is gonna this is the biggest hole here and it's in the center of all the action so we kind of doubled up on these l linear linear uh, reinforcements you know, just adding uh, one by twos all down through there and uh, yeah we just you know just for the fun of it added doubled this up and of course this is uh, one by twos sideways uh, reinforced against this one by two so we've got a lot of reinforcement on the front side here of the center we basically we also have plywood here. Plywood will go all the way back to right here, and then the person that sits here will have to face that way, the back, and the person that's there can obviously face the front. And the engine will be in here somewhere. We got to figure that out. We're the best place for that. It's going to be uh, 18 horsepower, high-speed Yamada diesel. There'll be one in e each hole, so we'll have three engines i have to figure out the throttle uh, the throttle linkage and all that so that's going to be a fun project <laughs> but we'll do that on battalion island right now we've got a 15 horsepower sumo rado engine gasoline that can't, came with this boat here so that's the one that hopefully will get us back to battalion island so in the center hole basically we did the same thing uh, added the extra wood here uh, along the inside uh, cross braced it uh, here like that uh, did uh, kind of like a superstructure here to hold the the beams crossing uh, so everything is really uh, braced in you know super braced the floor there with all the two by fours uh, went along the side doubled up on the side because this is like a one by four here and then we put another one by four inside and kind of matched this slope here until it leveled out with the inside one by two but we're just trying to stiffen the top frame here and keep the boat from flexing you know like that as it uh if, if it enter any waves and hole we'll have to figure out how to do that one it's already got a in engine mount but of course that's not gonna that's not going to that's these bolts you see right there and right there and underneath that piece of wood in there and they, they got cross braced uh, two by fours 
here that uh, the bolts are embedded in, but those holes aren't going to match up with my diesel hole, so we're going to have to redo that mount. We'll also have to redo this prop shaft because the angle here, diesels are taller, so they're so their uh, crankshaft or their output shaft is going to be higher up than a gas engine would be so all the angles for the propeller shaft and all this all this stuff's going to change uh here so we'll, we'll have to redo that too you know like the you know like on the big cat cat commands will be nets between here so you can lay here or sit here or sit there and fish off that end sit here fish off this end you can lay there uh you can squat there sit there indian cross leg style whatever the same here of course so they'll be netting here, netting here, and as we drive, you can lay on that and watch the ocean go under you, and you know, watch the dolphins swim. And uh, of course, that's in the movies. I don't know if that's real, but <laughs> we'll see. So anyway, hole B, hole C, the mothership, and hole A on this side. So we. We'll be back with more. Let me give you a shot from the front here. And we'll wrap it up for today. And then the next thing hopefully we'll be doing is nailing and epoxying all this. And that's going to be a real fun thing because the guys that work here, they like to work really fast and they get ahead of themselves. And they're usually pretty sharp though about which piece of the puzzle fits where first because sometimes you put one in and then you can't put the next one in and there's several instances of that in all this cross beam bracing that I did this it, it some parts go in first and some parts go in second some parts go in third and so I've got to really be there and uh, you know t telling them which one goes where and again they're pretty good at that too they, they've caught me a few times uh, getting out of work so it'll be a real team